Good afternoon and welcome again to the Texma webinars. Today we will talk about energy efficiency improvement driven by energy conservation measures and investments. First of all, let me introduce Neil Buffy, Energy Manager at Dexma, with more than seven years of experience in this field. Good afternoon, Neil. Good afternoon. Hello, everybody. And secondly, let me introduce myself. Uh, I, my name is uh, Roger Marcos, responsible for <laughs> sales in Spain and with around 20 years of experience in the field of energy and energy efficiency. The agenda is, as you uh, see in the, in the screen, uh, first of all, we'll talk about, we'll make a small introduction of Dexma for those who don't know yet the company. After that, Neil will talk about the existing types of energy conservation measures and how to know where to invest. Exactly. Once we know where to invest, we should know how to calculate the profitability and convenience of these investments. That's my turn. I'll try to explain the main financial ratios in this section. And last but not least, Neil will present the advanced tool uh, of uh, energy analysis. At the end of the webinar, as we usually do, we'll have some time left to discuss uh, about any issues of your interest. So let's uh, introduce uh, Dexma. Dexma is a software company. Uh, we are not hardware uh, manufacturers. Uh, our solution is uh, based on end-to-end -end cloud. Uh, also, artificial intelligence is one of our uh, main uh, characters. High customer satisfaction among global partners. We have a huge uh, uh, partnership all around the globe. We have an open and collaborative platform. And as you know, we are headquartered in Barcelona. Our platform, our solution, offers support to energy managers, managers in order to improve their energy management on their organization. We want to help you in the optimization of your energy consumption. Which could we say that are our key differentiators? Well, we say, and all, also our partners say, that uh, reliability is one of our key uh, points, advanced analytics, high level of customization, users can easily create a tailor-made dashboard. We are a, a software hardware agnostic, and we also offer professional services, ad hoc developments. As you can see, we have clients, uh, apart from all around the, the world, in a wide range of sectors like retail, education, tourism, uh, food services, banking, uh, culture, uh, museums, uh, public administration, real estate, and also industry. We have more of uh, 50,000 installations monitorized, and as you see, we are really all around the, the world, through mainly our more than 235 partners. But uh, we are not the only ones that think that we are great. Uh, we are also proud to receive lots of comments about important uh, analysts, as the ones you can see in your screen. All these comments only means that we've become a reference in the energy management software market, not only in Spain or Europe, but also in all the world. And we are happy for that. Before going into detail in the technical issues of the webinar, we are going to talk a little bit more about Dexma's philosophy and its roadmap, the energy management journey. In this sense, we'll find three stages, detect, analyze, and control. In the first stage, we find the Dexma Detect tool. Dexma Detect allows, with no need of power installation, Neil will talk about it later, in identifying which are the installations with the greatest saving potential. Once we have been able to identify uh, what these facilities are, Dexel or Dexma Analyze get into the field to play their role. This is our energy management software that thanks to functionalities like the ones we'll see today with Neil mainly, will allow us to analyze and achieve those savings that we have identified with Dexma Detect. Finally, we will soon have more information on this, but we make a small breakthrough 
thanks to our API and third hardware and software, Dexma will help you control your buildings as well, so that it will be even easier to achieve your savings. A basic control, but more than enough for the majority of projects that we are currently working on. Now, I leave you in good hands with Neil and how to know where to invest. Neil, to talk. Thank you, Roger. Now, we are, we are, we will talk about the energy conservation measures and where to invest. Uh, first of all, as always, we show you the savings pyramid. As you know, this webinar is a chapter of many that talk about different parts of the pyramid. Today, we will focus on the second step, energy conservation measures that requires investment. Also, remind you that we did a webinar about the first step of savings pyramid, talk about behavioral improvements with our colleague Aldrich, that you will find in the Dexma resource page. Also, as you can see in the base of the pyramid is the energy monitoring. As we know, it is an important part to achieve our goals in energy efficiency. And we will show you during this webinar. Okay, so first of all, if we are going to talk about energy conservation measures, we usually separate them in two big groups, energy conservation measures with low investment and high investment. And we will use this division to show you some examples that maybe you already know. Okay, so here we see the energy conservation measures with low investment. Why low investment? Because to implement them, we only need to use our available resources properly or invest our time. So first of all, maintenance. As you know, it's a recurring cost that normally all kinds of buildings have, not with the aim of saving energy, but to ensure that the building operates correctly. In consequence, some maintenance actions have a big impact in energy consumption, like the ones that you can see here. So for that sort of energy conservation measures, you don't have to do a big investment, but you must ensure that maintenance of your building is being done properly. The other, the other group, we consider energy management. So what is that, or what we understand about energy management? The idea of energy management is to reduce the energy bill being more efficient in all processes that involve energy consumption using tools or systems that we already have in our building, like adjust the HVAC set points, the HVAC and lighting schedules, and so on. Um, remind that the savings we are showing here in, in the screen are only indicative, and it depends on many factors like the type of building or the location of the building. So let's move to the other group, to the other big group, that is the energy conservation measures with high investment. Here we, we could find two two groups, retro commissioning and the energy conservation measures that we all know. First of all, retro commissioning. At the end, it means do a new commissioning of the building because this type of action are very interesting to carry out in buildings that have a substantial changes in use, processes, or recollocation of personnel, and so on. For example, the typical office building divided into small departments and meeting rooms that becomes more open and diaphanous space. So for example, we need to regulate the HVAC system according to the current building conditions. Also, in all buildings, although there are no substantial changes, if the maintenance is not optimal, after a few years, the air conditioning, for example, um, require a deeper check to ensure that it works properly. This kind of energy conservation measures requires personal specialized in installations and the same time measurement equipment like luxometer, flow meter, temperature proof, and so on. Finally, the last group, energy conservation measures, um, can be executed on passive or active elements. And the main objective is to reduce the energy consumption of a building 
process or system. There are energy me uh, conservation measures that could be applied in all things of buildings, such as replacing all lightning bulbs with LED technology or install speed drives in hydraulic pumps. And also another more specific ones, such as installing doors on existing commercial refrigeration units in supermarkets and so on. Okay, uh, very good, Neil. Uh, all this is very interesting, but with so many options, where do I start? Okay, Roger. Um, so, all of this is very interesting, but as you said, with, we have so many options, where do, where do I start? No? So, you are, um, this is the most frequent question that our clients ask themselves, and we, as experts in energy saving, must know how to answer. Let's see, Roger. Tell me, how many buildings you have, what type of buildings, and what information do you have about them? Okay, let's imagine right now I'm managing 1,000 offices through Spain, and I can get the following information. Look at the text box, energy bills, building surface area, location, employees, production, opening hours, construction year, etc. Perfect. I see that you make a good management of your portfolio. Thanks, Neil. Congratulations. <laughs> Thanks. So the first, and the first and the more important question is to know how much money do you have to invest in energy efficiency? <clears throat> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. With that poker face, I understand that you don't want to tell me. Well, let's see if I can convince you later. Let's see. So, uh, have you thought about how many buildings um, you want to invest in? Remember that you have 1,000 1, offices and a limited budget. Okay, the truth is that I would like to save energy in all offices, but as you say, I don't think I get the budget. So, help me. How do I prioritize where to focus my, investment, my, my investments, uh, Neil? Good question. We will take advantage of all the information that you have told me that you have. And we will focus on finding the best office to invest in. Uh, what do you think if we choose the biggest office of all your 1,000 offices? Neil, I think it's a good idea. Sure that this office, the biggest one, will have a great consumption and therefore I can save, I can save uh, more. And, well, it's the best option for sure. So maybe it would be better to choose the office directly according to the energy consumption, isn't it? Well, uh, sure, maybe you're right. Now I have the energy bills of the last three years and we can see which, offers, which, which office consumes the, the, the most. Well, good. As you can see, the biggest office is not the one that consumes the most. Remember that outside conditions affect your consumption and the same office doesn't consume the same in London as in Sevilla. Well, that's right. Then it decided this will be the office that thanks to your investment, or thanks to your uh, information, and thanks to my investment, will provide me the greater economic savings. Economic? Did you say economic? Uh, we are talking about energy, Roger. Uh, uh, you're right, but Neil, the higher consumption, the higher cost, isn't it? We could say yes, but it's not as simple as that. There are many factors that influence in this case, like the source of energy, the type of electricity rates, the contractual conditions, and so on. Let's move to analyze the energy cost of your offices. Okay, let's see. Neil, yeah, thanks. So, Roger, here you can see the cost of energy bills of your offices. And mm -hmm. how do you see it now? We have identified the office that has the most energy cost of all. Well, then it's easy to, to decide. I'm going to invest in this office. I'm sure I'll get the maximum savings with the minimum investment. Thank you, Neil. Well, 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 wait, wait, sorry, uh, <laughs> Roger. Sorry again, but it is not always true. But Neil, we have used all the information that we have. You can't go any farther. We have to choose where to start saving energy. Yes, that's true. We don't have, oh, sorry, we don't have more information and we don't need more. What do, you th what do you think if I told you that we can mix and cook all this information 
to transform it into a something with more value. Wow, sounds good. Tell me more. With the energy consumption of, all, of your offices and all those variable, variables that mostly affect its consumption, such as, such as its location, its opening hours, and its surface area, I could tell you which is the office with the highest energy savings potential, or highest economical savings potential, or CO2 emission savings potential, and so on. I like that. Are you telling me that I can have a ranking of offices according to their savings potential? <laughs> That's it, Roger. So, with this information, now you can decide where to start. Perfect. But once I have chosen the office, how do I know where to look? Lighting system, air conditioning, heating? Good question, Roger. Let's go far, farther. Okay. As you have commented, not only in office, but in all buildings, there are different systems that consume energy, like the air conditioning system, heating system, compressed air system, lighting system, and so on. Exactly. So what should I do? An energy audit of the office to know where these inefficiencies are? Well, if we talk about one office, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be very expensive. But surely you won't only save energy in one office. I have seen your budget, and you can save energy in a few more. It's true, Neil. My idea is to be able to run energy conservation measures in about 200 offices, the least of efficient ones. So, 200 audits are not the most profitable option, either for cost or time. What do you think if we add an spicy touch to the cooking of data that we have done before? Mm -hmm. What do you mean? Do you, do you know the concept of NIL, non-intrusive load monitoring? Uh, um, do, you, do you call NIL? Uh, it's a word play regarding your name? No, sure not, Roger. <laughs> the idea is based on making a disgregation of your energy consumption in different subconsumptions of your building without installing hardware. In your case, we could break your consumption into four parts. Heating, air conditioning, lightning, and others. Uh, Neil, doing this way, we could see which part of my building is the least efficient, and so focus efforts there. Exactly, Roger. Not only that, we also could know which energy conservation measures we should do in the 200 offices that you were talking about, according to your final goal, which could be energy saving, economic saving, or CO2 emission saving. Wow, Neil, that's incredible that we can do all of this with the data that I have given you. So what role does energy monitoring play here? With my consumption data and the characteristics of my offices, I already have everything to save. Well, it's not true. We could say that you have everything you need to start quickly and efficiently without having, ha having to perform audits or spend money on hardware installations and at the beginning of the project. You will need monitoring to know the consumption of your offices in real time, detect possible, possible anomalies of consumption, do predictive maintenance according to consumption, and above all, and above all, we will be able to track the evolution of your energy um, measures. You have executed through a measurement and verification project and not be fooled by suppliers of energy efficiency improvements. At the end of the presentation, we will do an exercise that will allow you to see everything we have been talking about. Okay, nice. Uh, so um... now, Roger, will explain the most important financial figures to have into account in the evaluation of energy saving, energy efficiency projects. Okay, thanks, Neil. As Neil uh, said, uh, we are going to talk about what does my client will understand uh, better, energy, kilowatt hour, or money. As we all know, when it comes to justifying an investment in energy efficiency, uh, normally it's money who talks. But are we sure that is that what my client understands or my department responsible will understand or my CEO, my board of directors uh, will do? 
Before answering these questions, we'll have to present some of the ratios and uh, terms we all will have to know. Probably most of you know them and uh, already use them, but it's good to uh, review some of these important uh, figures. Uh, specifically, in this webinar, we'll talk about uh, the internal rate uh, of return, the payback, and the net present value as uh, the validation or the valuation of uh, investment in energy efficiency projects. These three ratios are uh, the most important ones and give us information about whether or not to develop the investments. But each of them, as you probably know, give us a different type of information. In order to be able to work with these three ratios, we also have to know other terms and variables such as discount rate, cash flow, uh, OPEX and CAPEX that I will explain uh, following what they do mean. First of all, uh, the discount rate is the return in percentage required on, this, on, the, on the investment. We'll see that in the calculation of the three ratios uh, set before, mostly in the internal rate of return, it is important to understand this concept. As you, say, as you see, it's a financial variable and it's used to calculate the current value of future capital and allows you to evaluate investment projects. It's a bit complicated, but it has to be said like that to understand why do we need it to uh, calculate the IRR. It contains mostly two variables, financing cost and the risk of the investment. On the other hand, we also wish, should uh, know uh, what does the cash flow means. Cash flow is the cash generated or spent, depending on, on each project or organization, with an investment project in a given period. It's an important uh, indicator of liquidity of the project or organization. And when calculating the payback, cash flows uh, give us some uh, important information, as well as for the internal rate of return and the net present value uh, indicator or uh, ratio. On the other hand, we have these two uh, other terms, OPEX and CAPEX, then although we, all, we don't need them uh, to calculate the three uh, main ratios that we'll explain later, it's good to know uh, in terms of uh, energy efficiency investments. The first one, the operational expenditures, uh, try to cover all the recurring costs needed for the correct operation of the project. Supplies, fuel, water, etc. Rentals, maintenance, lawyers, etc. On the other hand, we have CAPEX, the capital expenditures that mostly we can summarize as investments. Uh, in this sense, uh, investments are different from expenses when the asset uh, used or uh, bought is used for several years in the business or, or project. Okay, now we enter in the investment valuation with the three main ratios we have uh, said before, and we start with the most easy and uh, common one, the payback. This ratio answers the question of how long will it take to recover the initial investment uh, from cash flows, the initial investment in the energy efficiency or the energy energy project. It's a simple calculation that gives the result in years, and it is an static creation of charge. The lower the payback, better the investment will be for the payback uh, ratio. On the other hand, it gives no idea of the profitability of the project and does not take into account the cash flow after the payback period. So it's limited in this, in this sense. That's why we use the two other ratios, the first one, the net present value, and the other one, the IRR. Uh, net present value uh, allows us to calculate the present value of a certain number of future cash flows thanks to an investment. That's, it's, a, uh, it's an amount of money that comes from the, uh, the project. The decision criteria, it's very easy. If the net present value is positive, go with the investment. And in case uh, of comparison of two projects, 
with different NPV, the one with the highest one will be the chosen. On, for the, uh, on the other hand, if the net present value is negative, do not go with the investment. It's not a profitable one. Nell, Nell, Nell let's imagine we have a building where it is possible to make two types of improvement investment. You can choose uh, two types of investment. It's just your expertise. So, for example, change the lighting bulbs and change the chiller, for example. Okay, and let's uh, think that for 2020, uh, your company can only invest 1 million euros. Uh, regarding the net present value I will give you, which advice will uh, give you to, to, the, um, to the company? Remember, 1 million investment, and regarding the lighting, we have uh, 12 million net present value, and regarding the change of the chiller, we have a 7 million net present value. With this information, what recommendation would you give to the company? So, as you said, I will choose the change of lighting option. No, isn't it? Well done. Sure. Uh, the net present value of the lighting is much higher than the uh, change of chiller one. So, regarding this uh, ratio, this is the, the, the good answer. Okay. The final ratio we have uh, we'll talk about is the internal rate of return. Is the last, but one of the most used and important ratios in, this, in the evaluation of energy efficiency projects. Uh, it is an indicator of the profitability of the project. The higher the internal rate of return is, the greater the profitability, and so better the project is in terms of uh, investment. As I said, this is the decision rule. Neil, let's imagine another building, different from the previous one, in which it is possible, again, to make two types of improvement uh, in energy efficiency. Can you give me, again, two new examples? Okay, I can choose two energy conservation measures, typical ones, maybe change the boiler, and change the ventilation system. Great, good examples. Uh, let's imagine again that we have for the next 2020 only 1 million euros to, to invest and the internal rate of return for the boiler it's 12% uh, internal rate of the uh, of return for ventilation it's 8% which advice will you give to the company Neil? So I think that I'm going to invest in a boiler change because the internal rate of return is higher Good, again your expertise is also in financials, as I can see, not only in technical issues. And, uh, of course, the IRR in boiler, in changing the boiler is higher than in, the, in changing the ventilation, so probably regarding this ratio will be the chosen uh, measure. Now, I leave you again with Neil and with the importance of advanced analytics uh, in energy uh, analysis. Neil, yes. you Thanks, Roger. Um, now we, will, we are going to see the advanced energy analysis with a case of a study. So first of all, let me show you a good image that represents it, this case. So here you can see three main parts. Um, first of all, data, then the energy knowledge, and then tools. So we need this, these three main parts to do a good energy efficiency project. Data, what do we understand about data? So we need data about your building, the energy consumption, um, uh, maybe main supply of submetering, gas, also metadata like um, square area, um, heating degree days, cooling degree days, and so on. And of course, we need energy knowledge. All of our partners know about that, so no problems. And to do the work uh, efficiently, we need tools, so here, in DEXMA, we can show you two tools, DEXMA Detect and DEXMA Analyze. One, it's important to do benchmark and to see the potential savings without um, invest money or time. And the other one, um, uh, it, it's important to do a deep analysis and look for consumption anomaly uh, anomalies and to do measurement and verification projects. So let's move to a... Uh, a case of study. Um, 
Yeah. Okay. No. Okay, sorry. Wait a moment, we have to go out. Uh, no. Ah, okay, right now. So let's move to the Dexma Detect software. And now, wait a moment. So the idea is to do, well, imagine that you have 40, 48 supermarkets and we want to know uh, in which one uh, we, want, we are going to invest or to have a benchmark about all of these supermarkets. So if the, the, final, the final goal is to, to reach the one of the, the less um, efficiency uh, building and do an energy conservation measure and see the results of these energy conservation measures. So here you can see, wait a moment, now, okay. Here we are going to look for the supermarkets, the Fourier food super supermarkets, here. And now we can see we have 48 supermarkets um, throughout the United Kingdom. You can see in the map. Um, we are not focusing in the tool, but only in the, in the aim of the, the, the webinar, uh, the energy conservation measures. And what is important here is the classification of our buildings for look savings potential or for group of saving potential. And also we have a benchmark about energy consumption of our buildings. So you can see here our 48 buildings and the most, uh, the most ones that consumed and the color represents the energy savings potential. So right now we have a benchmark and we can choose the less efficiency buildings or, or supermarkets and go deeper. So if we go to the other um, part of this tool, we can choose uh, one of the supermarkets, maybe 55, for example. And we are going to see where is the building. So we can see here in the map where the building is situated in, well, wait a moment now. And what's the most important, we have an efficiency score that compares this supermarket um, against the other supermarkets and the efficiency potential. And here we have the consumption of the supermarket, the monthly consumption, comparing with the best consumption uh, of the similar buildings doing benchmark and comparing to the best, uh, to the average consumption of similar buildings. And what we are talking about um, before here we can see the power of NILM. So you can, we can disaggregate your main consumption in different parts. For example, heating, lightning, or refrigerators. So we can see that refrigerators is the most uh, consumption part of the supermarket. Uh, Neil, one question. Uh, all this is done without installing any hardware. That's it. It's only using your um, energy bills, your consumption um, of energy bills, and using the metadata that uh, that uh, partner give give us. So maybe the location and the surface area. Only with that and with all the data that we have in our database, we could do all of this. Great, thank you. So now we know um, which is the the less efficiency supermarket of our portfolio. So we can go deeper and analyze, analyze um, the consumption of, of the supermarket. So we can start with uh, Dexma Analyze, or Dexel, as you know. And here we, we can install monitoring, for example, in the main supply in blue and in the coal production in, in black. So here you could do a deeper analyze and see how is your building, how, how your building is consumed. 
So not only that, uh, if you want to do, do a energy conservation measure project, you need to value uh, to give value to the the tips that Roger have been talking about of financial tips. So here you have the the cost um, part of our software, and you can see, for example, in the core production, we could. Uh, give uh, the period last year. Uh, one comment, Neil. Yeah. Uh, we can see that we are doing it in Spanish, but of course it's in other uh, 20 languages. It's just... Uh... Yes, that's, that's my fault, Roger. Yeah. But, <laughs> no. but it's, no, it's, it's similar, them... it's similar. <laughs> just to let them know that, uh, yeah. of course, it's in English, French, and etc. So here we can see that our coal production um, are, well, are consuming about more or less 50 euros per, year, per, per day. So now, if we are going to do an energy conservation measure, um, we know uh, about uh, which um, con um, cost we are working. So if, for example, um, in this coal production, we could um, install a high pressure um, control to reduce the consumption of the coal production, we could estimate with well, we could estimate with knowledge with our knowledge that we will reduce our consumption about ten uh, percent, for example. So, if the energy conservation measures cost uh, more or less uh, two thousand euros, and like we can see here, our coal production consumes about twenty two hundred euros per year we can calculate our payback and it's more or less one year payback. So it could be a good uh, energy conservation measure to implant in this supermarket. True. So after that, if we implement this energy conservation measure, we need, we need to follow it. So we need to know how it uh, goes no? through the project. So for that, we have the in the analysis part, the project a measure and verification and verification project so if we go there here we have the floating hp control that we install in this coal production and we can see that the project is about one year now we have only 360 days and uh, our target was 10% of of savings and now we only have 6.6. .6. So if we go deeper, we can analyze the consumption with our baseline. So we have created a baseline using our ABC tool that, can, that helps you to calculate automatically a baseline. And here we can see in which days our consumption is less than our baseline or is higher. So we can evaluate, um, validate if um, our project is going good or not. Also, here we have the accumulative um, consumption with the, our baseline in blue, our real consumption, and our aim. So we are between the two, the, the baseline and the and the goal. So we have to improve or get better about uh, our energy conservation measure to reach our goal. Well, Neil, that's, that's amazing. Not only for uh, companies that want to introduce energy conservation measures or energy efficiency projects, but also for energy service companies to do a first fast analyze in order to know uh, not only the baseline, but also the profitability of the, the investments, isn't it? Yes, that's it, Roger. Uh, the first step is always uh, use um, Dexma Detect to focus on the buildings that are less efficiency, and then we can go further using Dexma Analyze to implement our energy conservation measures and follow the the improve of of that. Great. Sounds, so sounds great. Um, I think it's it's all for today. Let's. Go to the presentation. And okay, yes. so yes, <laughs> that's it. That's it. And if you have 
some questions. Let's see in our chat if someone has brought any question or something like that. Uh, I can see one, uh, Neil. Yes, ah, yes, yes. Uh, Steve from London says, how does NILM NILM uh, work uh, and what data would you need if I have, for instance, uh, 3,000 3, bank branches spread across Europe? Well, uh, that's the question from, from London, I see. Uh, Steve, uh, Neil, whatever you want. Okay. I'm going to ask, try to ask. Uh, it's a good question, Steve. Thank you. Uh, we only need the consumption of the last 12 months, either in monthly resolution, that you can take it off from the bills, or data from your fiscal meter with more resolution. And we would also need the postcode where each office is located. And if you have the surface area, could be could be okay. It's the only information that we we need to do this disaggregation of your main consumption. Well, uh, Steve, I uh, hope uh, Neil has answered you the question. Uh, if you want to know more, uh, please contact us and we'll try to, to help you. Uh, I can see, Neil, another question. This case uh, from uh, Flavio uh, from Milan. Uh, he says, I'm very interested in the detect and its functionalities. Where can I find more information? It's possible to do a demo. What? Well, I think that you are the best to answer <laughs> this question because you are the commercial part. So not for I sure. Let you. <laughs> uh, Flavio, uh, we can do a demo. Maybe I will have the the help of Neil or someone else. Of but uh, for sure, you just have to contact us, and we'll uh, we'll help you in whatever you you need, a demo or uh, whatever. Uh, what else? For sure. For sure. Okay, so maybe it's time to close because uh, we have the Spanish webinar right yes. now mm -hmm. in, Spain, in Spanish. So thanks all for your attention and we hope that we like it and it and has been profitable for, for you, for you all. Okay, uh, Neil, thank you and thank you to you all also for attending this uh, webinar and hope to see you or to hear you soon in another, in another one. Have a good afternoon. Bye. Bye.